My name is Molly, and we are currently Hello, and welcome to In My Room, a weekly series where I'll be taking a look at the worst, the best, and the messiest aspects of teen bedroom culture. The reason I sort of wanted to do a series on this is because the bedroom is such a obvious but also overlooked place. The only space, I think, in a lot of people's homes that they feel that they have some semblance of control over and I think that that really comes into play when we're teenagers. It's really a time where we require a lot of a lot of privacy and a lot of room to sort of explore and try on new identities and, and sort of like figure out who we are. At my parents' house now, the house that I grew up in, my bedroom doesn't exist anymore. It's now an office and my sister's bedroom is now a guest room and it's sort of weird to go back and feel like you don't have that place that was so formative for you and I think that there's a really important reason for that and I think it's because it's really where a lot of your first memories came from and your first memories of becoming who you are today really played out in that landscape it really acts as a safe space or a safe place from your parents and the world outside. The concept of the autonomous teen bedroom is relatively new. It really didn't take off until the post-war era, which was right after World War II. Family sizes sort of became smaller and there was a big move, especially with more middle class or more affluent families, to move to the suburbs, which just allowed more space for a teen to have their own room. The post-war era was also sort of the first time that teenagers were being seen as a separate marketable and profitable entity. She's tremendously influenced by fashion advertisements and gets many ideas on grooming from magazines, television, and movies. Teens having their own bedrooms was feared and favored by parents and because on one hand they were really afraid of like illicit things happening in the bedroom like drug use or like sexual deviance but on the other hand it was sort of a way for them to maintain like a distant control. It was also sort of believed that teenagers were less likely to get into trouble if they were at home. The separate bedroom became a nice idea because they were sort of under their parents roof so they were being watched to a certain degree. So in a lot of ways, the separate bedroom was in favor of the teen who felt like they were finally having some privacy and an allotted space to do their own thing, but also in favor of the parent who felt like they could really keep an eye on them. So this is where something like snooping could come into play or making sure that your teenager leaves their door open when people are over. These tiny acts of control that still allow the parental units to uh, keep their dominance. And I think that that's what's so central to the teen bedroom is sort of the push and pull between the teenager versus the parent. My dad's turned into a monster and there's nowhere to hide. He's back, he talks louder, he looks stupider, and he doesn't listen to a word you say. It's changed a lot in the aesthetic, but we always sort of know a teen bedroom when we see it. There are just sort of slight variations in the teen bedroom. I think one of the main factors is technology and advancements in technology, from having a phone in your room, to having a personal TV, to having cell phones, computers, whatever. Another thing I think is the DIY cut and paste aesthetic that's so popular in teen bedrooms that really got popularized in the 70s, 80s, and 90s with magazine clippings on the wall. And now what I see a lot more is a more streamlined and really like clean aesthetic that's really popular in, in YouTube videos. The really interesting 
dynamic that's at play here is this idea of having agency but still feeling restricted as a teenager. You still feel restricted by your parents and in a lot of ways you feel restricted by society and societal pressures to maintain or upkeep a sort of like identity or look to fit in. Choosing what you consume and how you display it is, is super important when you're a teenager. It can be kind of a weird thing because you, you're feeling sort of empowered by having this newfound space and freedom, but at the same time you are also being sold this empowerment and I think that's why Teenage Rebellion is a given. All right, so I think that's enough info to pack into one session, but join me next time where I'll be talking about another really crucial aspect of teen bedroom culture, the diary. <laughs>